60 Cycle Hum features a mix of products that were purchased or provided and content that is a mix of sponsored, paid, unpaid, and Patreon funded. Use your eyes, ears, and common sense to come to your own conclusions. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum. And in this exciting episode of the Ford Awards series of videos, I'm attacking the clones. I'm attacking a giant pile of clon clone pedals. We're going to clonk alone. We're going to clonk together. It's going to be a lot of fun. Where am I going with this? <laughs> I've been trying to sift through all my bins of affordable board pedals and weed out all the redundancies, put them in a big box for giveaways or some sort of charity drive or something like that. I did compressors last time. This time I'm doing Klon clones. That's really what's going on. So anyways, I've got four affordable board Klon style pedals here. I think this is the wish.com version of a Klon. Emily from the Get Offset YouTube channel and podcast sent this to me. Uh, I've been sitting on it for way too long. I've got the most guy Golden Horse here. I have the K-Line just overdrive, but it's got a snake Medusa archer lady shooting, what are those called? Some sort of Jackson model of electric guitar on there. And then we've got the Azor overdrive. And for a point of comparison, a non affordable board Klon clone, we have the Mojo Hand Sacred Cow here, which I demoed years and years and years ago, but this has been the Klon that I just keep around. It's the one that I feel like covers the most bases, kind of captures the spirit and the sound of what people associate with Klons the best. And so it's the one. As far as I'm concerned, it's the one. Uh, I'm honestly not a Klonosaur. <laughs> you guys can steal that. If you are a Klonosaur, go ahead and print a shirt. Put it on a business card. Tell people, yeah, I'm a Klonosaur. No big deal. Uh, but I'm not. I honestly don't care about clons very much at all. I've actually played the technically most valuable clon in existence. The serial number number two, the first one to go into production that Josh Scott owns. I got to play around with that when I was visiting with ugh, can't talk. When I was visiting JHS, and it's fine. It's fine. I don't really care about clons, so it really didn't do anything for me. But anyways, let's get started. And of course, in affordable board tradition, I'm gonna use an affordable guitar. This time the Xavier, uh, I forget the model name and number, but it's a Strat, come on. You go to Xavier, it's a GFS brand, and they sell these things for about 200 bucks before shipping. And it's great. It's honestly a lot of fun. I've been having a lot of fun playing it. I need to order another Afforda Strat for the next uh, continuation of that series. But anyways, I thought a golden guitar with a bunch of golden horsey pedals would be fun. Here is my clean tone, because of course... I'm on the number four position, that is the neck and the bridge pickup. And of course, I'm running my two Princeton's rig because that's what I run in practically every video. I know they're not Afforda amps, but I haven't done an Afforda amp series yet, so deal with it. All right, let's get started. Let's start off with the Mojo Hand Sacred Cow just as a point of comparison. I've got them all dialed in to be about the same gain, output, and tonal setting uh, just to have a first point of comparison. And then I'll get into diming things. And then I'm gonna turn them all on at the same time, because of course I am. People tend to use clons more as like a boost on the cleaner side of the circuit. There's a little bit of hair at this setting, but not much. It's more about a preamp boost, a mid boost, like a high mid boost, and like this kind of like tight filtering around that mid-high frequency. Which is honestly really smart. It's the sort of utility drive that most people need when they're pushing a hot tube amp or something like that. They need an always on pedal to put them right where they need to be in the mix. It's just typically not, you know, the way I like to do that myself. But I think it's, I think it's a good circuit. And a 
lot of people use it in some very effective ways. <laughs> on the number two position. All right, on to the other pedals. Well, I just switched positions. Let's reset our ears back to that number four. All right, let's start with the wish.com clone clone here seems quite a bit brighter pushing into a higher mid frequency with that kind of boost Yeah, the Sacred Cow has a more rounded kind of open EQ characteristic where this is really tight and bright on that mid frequency. But the game character is pretty much exactly the same and it's doing pretty much the same thing. It's just a slightly different flavor of EQ filtering. <laughs> Let's try it on the lean setting. Nope. It still sounds rounder and more natural as far as that kind of EQ filtering goes. Which doesn't mean it's better or worse, but you know, it's a subjective observation of difference. want that kind of peaked out mid focused filtering. I don't know. All right, on to the most guy. Sounds more peaky in those mids again. I think the biggest difference I find typically across a four to word pedals versus, you know, unaffordable word pedals is the EQ filtering can be very different. A lot of times they get the drive character correct, but the EQ seems to be the touchy thing that really goes in different direction. that setting. I'm going to give it a little bit less treble and a bit more gain to see if it fattens it up a little bit because it seems quite a bit thinner, not quite a bit, it seems a bit thinner than the Sacred Cow and even the Wish. Again, 
the sacred cow sounds a lot more natural in that eq range these are different types different you know areas of focus on a peaked out mid this has a peaked mid but it's a lot rounder a lot more spread out as far as that eq hump goes i can't believe i'm nitpicking these so much they're horsey pedal i'm having trouble deciding which of these i prefer though I think I prefer the game character of the Wish.com one here. Yeah, I think the Wish.com is beating the most guy for me. All right, now the K-Line. Again. Super tight and bright EQ filtering on the affordable board pedal. The non affordable board, the unaffordable board pedal. I don't want to say it's unaffordable board because that means it's really expensive. It's a normally priced pedal. <laughs> the EQ is just a lot more natural. Maybe you don't want that, maybe you do, but that is my observation. It's like the difference between a five watt amp and like a 50 watt amp. You know how there's that kind of like shift in, you know, the EQ character of the gain on a low wattage amp versus a mid wattage amp, like a mid wattage amp or a higher wattage amp. It just opens up a lot of headroom. This feels like it has headroom and these so far feel like they're just stuck in this low wattage, lo-fi sort of sound. So far, the Wish.com one is winning it uh, as the affordable board Clon Cologne. All right, now for the Azor. That's not bad. Seems like it's got a pretty decent noise floor on there, though. Yeah, I'm not getting that from the Wish. Of static there it might be because it's sharing a chain with a bunch of other pedals but the other pedals aren't doing that yeah i think the wish.com clon is beating all of these i don't know what these go for i don't know if they're still available or not but i think just in its overall tonality the drive character is about the same across all of them in a technical detail like not having a high noise floor like the Azor. I think it's the one as far as Afford a Clon clones go. But 
I think there's a lot of merit to not buy. Don't, don't ever do not ever buy the real deal. Don't spend thousands of dollars on a Klon. Come on guys, buy a KTR, go buy a KTR or buy, you know, a Mojo hand sacred cow or even buy a soul food. I've tried soul foods and I was like, Hey, this sounds great. There's mods out there for them too. There's all kinds of clones on the market these days. Clon clones. Don't buy the real thing for thousands of dollars. There's some really good ones out there. It's not a circuit that's a huge mystery anymore. <laughs> Seriously guys, don't throw thousands of dollars away is what I'm saying. I think the only reason to buy the real thing is like, if you're a recording studio, and you're trying to bring in clients with the gear that you have, like, oh, hey, we've got a real uh, plate spring in here. It's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. We have a dumbbell in the corner. You want to record with a dumbbell? We have a dumbbell. Oh, you want to use a light drive? We have a real Klon. And that's how you bring clients into a recording scenario. And you're charging them tens of thousands of dollars, so you recoup that relatively quickly. I don't know how recording businesses works. I, I, I'm making this all up. But that's the only scenario I can imagine where it makes sense to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a light overdrive pedal. <laughs> All right, let's get into some more extreme settings here. And then I'll start stacking stuff. Gain all the way up on the Mojo hand. <laughs> This is a lot brighter with the gain turned up. Let's try this with the switch on the lean side. Oh yeah, that is super bright with the gain all the way up. Actually, a bit more growl from the wish.com. On the fat side, on the fatty side of the switch, you get that growl back. That's interesting. Yeah, this one's brighter as well. I gotta say, I think I like the brightness and the clarity of the cheapies over the, uh, the mojo hand. When the gain's all the way up, very rarely does anyone say, oh, I, I use a Klon with the gain all the way up. So that's kind of a weird metric to measure and buy. But that is interesting. I'm learning something. That one is so nasal.
bright, bright, bright. Interestingly, this has more of a low push to it. Even with this on the fatty side with the tone rolled back a tad there, it has this low end that I'm not sure is going to translate to the YouTube compression. It's not extreme, but it's different. It's all about tiny little comparisons in this video, apparently. All right, let's do super, super low gain settings and then I'll stack them all. How does that sound versus the clean? That little boost right there, that little like preamp sounding boost is what people are paying thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for. Why? A nice sparkle. Yeah, it kind of brings out a really nice quality on those high strings. A little bit of ring at the end is very nice, and you're not getting very much of that without it on. I get it, I really do. It's just not my thing most of the time. The Wish is giving me that little sparkle. Interestingly, the most guy sounds more mid-scooped. It has that little bit of sparkle on the brights. But the mids seem to be disappeared quite a bit more than the other pedals so far. Like that thickness in the middle is missing. The K-line now. Kind of similar to the most guy, although on the low gain setting, it just sounds flatter and a bit more dead than the other offering so far. So far, I'm, I'm honestly, even though it's also nitpicky, I'm pretty impressed that the Mojo Hand Sacred Cow does feel and sound superior across all settings now. It's so nitpicky. It is. But there's something about it that just hits a little better. 
Even with the gain all the way down, it's making a static noise right now. See, this doesn't have that little sparkly sizzle on the high end. has a bit more of like a compression feel. Yeah, the Sacred Cow just feels better. <laughs> I think this is still my favorite out of the Afforda Klon clones here. This one is the loser, just because of that noise floor. Um, it's not doing the thing. On the low gain setting, I probably should have started out comparing that, that hyper low gain setting first because it actually showed a lot of differences. And that's kind of where people tend to live with Klons anyways. But yeah, that, that noise floor is unacceptable with the Azor. Um, these are fine subjectively. They're more kind of mid-peak focused. I don't know. It's, it's also subjective. But I think this is the one where... I feel like I could recommend this as an affordable Klon clone sort of thing. I mean, they're all affordable Klon clones if you're paying less than $7,000, right? <laughs> but big fan of the Sacred Cow. I'm a fan of this now. Um, I don't even have affiliate links for Wish or anything like that. So go buy these and I won't make any money. That's fine. If you go buy these, I hopefully will have an affiliate link that will work. These... These two are subjective. This I can't recommend, but let's stack them. Let's have some fun stacking them. We'll start off with the light gain sounds. Bright nasal. doesn't sound good. High gain.
gonna grab the baritone. Squire baritones are back. People are buying them and they're showing up and people are messaging me pictures of the Squire baritones they're buying. This one's black. The new ones come in seafoam and sunburst, I think. But they're really good buys. I'll have a link for that. If you want a baritone from Squire, now's the time because the first time they sold out. So get them while they're still in stock is what I'm saying. All right, that's stupid. There's no reason to do that. Flash forward three weeks from now, Tyler's gonna do the same exact thing, but with five original Klon clones. He's gonna stack five $10,000 Klon clones, $50,000 of Klon in one video, and he'll do it with, you know, a $200,000 PRS or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Tyler, have fun doing that when you get around to it. But for me, I'm glad I did it with a bunch of cheapies because that sounded awful. There is no reason to get that sound. To stack any of them, really, they don't stack with each other well. The moment you stack two clons, they get really nasal, really quick. Stack them with other drives. But no, not together. It's not good. Do you guys agree? <laughs> if you disagree, fight it out in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude, nasty comments, support us on Patreon. Uh, some people like to hang out in the premieres and chat with me and everyone else. We have a really tight group of people who show up pretty much every video to hang out and chat, and I love it. I honestly love it. It is, you know, the cherry on the top of the Sunday for me. It is my social payment for working on these videos and doing all the editing and making thumbnails and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it is sincerely like a source of joy in my life to do the premieres and get to chat with everyone while the video launches. So if you wanna be in that special club, if you're one of those people, you wanna click the bell down below and set your settings to all so you get notifications when I launch videos. I premiere all my videos. So you wanna get a chance to jump in on the premieres, that's the way to do it. Otherwise, if you're naked, buy a shirt, click all the affiliate links so that I can put food on the table for my family and stay grounded. Bye everybody.